Hey book lovers, Victoria here and you're watching uh, My Books and Me. Today I'm bringing you a new uh, book tag. Uh, thank you to Akara for tagging me in the Netflix book tag, I think that's what it's called. Um, very excited, it's been a long time since I've been tagged at a book tag. Probably because I'm not so active in the booktube community anymore as I used to be in the past. Um, but I'm very excited because not only do I love books and love reading, but I also love Netflix. And the questions in this tag are actually really, really good. And it's been a while since I've had a tag where I could go through my bookshelf and pick a bunch of different books. A lot of the tags I've done in the past, the questions I've like doubled up on answers or I don't know, I've just kind of felt like I've been boring with my answers. Um, so there are 12 questions in this tag. I'm going to link below to Kara's video if you want to go check it out. And let's begin. Number one, recently watched a book you've recently finished reading. Um, I just finished reading this one this week and that is Losing the Field by Abby Glines, the fourth book in the Field Party series. You guys know, if you know me, if you follow me, you know that I love Abby's books and I was very excited for this one and firstly the cover of this one is amazing. Um, I enjoyed this. I didn't enjoy it as much as I had the previous books in this series, but it was a pretty good read nonetheless. And I should have a review for this one going up very soon. So follow me on social media to see when that goes up. Number two, top picks a book or books that you have been recommended based on your previous based on books you've previously read. Um, for this one, a lot of the books that I own and a lot of the books that I've read have been because of like bulk recommendations, like they're hyped up books that everyone's been talking about. There's not many books that I can specifically say, oh, that person recommended it to me. Um, and to be fair, I already owned the first book in this series. and I'm not even holding that book. I picked up like my favorite book in the series, which isn't the first book. Um, I, and I, and I was like, I had always planned on reading it. I had started reading it once. I got like five pages in and just didn't really get into it. And it was close to the third book in this series release. I told like my, like two of my friends, my two of my IRL friends were like really excited for this book to come out. And I like told them I hadn't read the series. I owned the first book and they were like, you need to read it. And I, and I did read it and I loved it. And I ended up reading um all three books and they're quite chunky books in 11 days um and that is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. I picked up Akamath because it's my favorite book ever um sometimes I just forget that there was A Court of Thorns and Roses and I just feel like the series starts with this so yeah anyway yeah so Shanti and Ellie thank you for telling me to read this series because I love it number three recently added the last book you bought um I bought a couple recently I think this, this was like the last one to buy I bought or the last one that arrived anyway doesn't matter a book haul is coming at the end of the month guys um, and that is quarterly invited by Zoe Sugg this is Zoe's new book it just came out and by the way I got it signed oh you can't really see but it's signed um, this is a really beautiful book and I'm so excited to have it and it's just really pretty Number four, popular on Netflix, books that everyone knows about. So we have to share two books that we read and two books we have no interest in reading. The two books that I have read, and I don't actually have them with me, but that doesn't matter. You guys know what they look like anyway. So firstly is the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Read this, loved this. Um, actually so glad I read it because I was one of those people that watched the movies first, um, or most of the movies first, um, but really, really loved the books and I've read them several times since. The other series is the Akita, well, the Akita series. Everyone loved it and I can see why. Um, two books that I have no interest in reading. The first one is The Twilight series by Stephanie Meyer. I have never had any interest in reading Twilight at all. Although the only time I've ever been slightly interested in picking up the books was when I was reading the Fifty Shades series by A.L. James and I was kind of interested to see how E.L. James went from being a big fan of the Twilight series to writing fan fiction that turned into Fifty Shades, you know what I mean? Like I was kind of interested to see how that all leveled out and what went to what. Um, but yeah, never like zilch interest in Twilight. And one of my friends kind of hates that because she's a massive fan of the series and I'm just like, I could not care less. Um, and the second one is the Divergent series by Veronica Roth. I used to be interested in reading this. I think it was sort of after the whole Hunger Games thing because I loved the Hunger Games books and I was like I could totally read the Divergent series and I just never got around to getting the first book and I kind of I'm sort of not into dystopians much more much anymore. Like, I do really like the Hunger Games story but looking back I'm kind of like not overly phased by it um, and I've just yeah never really been interested in picking up Divergent and I mean I know that big 
plot twist that happens like right at the end of the final book and I'm just like well I know how it sort of ends now I don't really need to read the series who knows that could change but at this point in time I'm just like yeah I'm so past reading anything like that number four comedies a funny book this is one that I've read recently that I really really enjoyed and that is Being Brook by Emma Hart. I had to think there for a moment. Um, it is the first book in a duology, in a companion duology, which I'm currently in the middle of reading the second book. But anyway, I really like uh, our main character Brooke in this. She's quite a funny character, very relatable, and I really like the narration that she's got because at times she's speaking directly to you as the reader, just the way it's sort of written, but it's kind of not really breaking the fourth wall, if you know what I mean. I don't know. It's a really fun book. If you like romances and contemporaries, this is a really fun one. It was just, I don't know, I really liked it. I don't know if it was funny, 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 but it was definitely fun to read. Number five, dramas. A character who is a massive drama king or queen. I didn't pick up this book either because it's on the bottom pile on a shelf and I was like, I am not getting that. Um, but that is Nanette from the Rosemary Beach series and her book in the series is up in flames. Um, this is through by Abby Glines. I love this series. It's my favourite Abby series of all time and a majority of the books in this series I love and I've reread them several times. Um, but Nanette is the biggest bitch in the world. She is like, I mean, to be fair, we explore like she definitely has some mental issues, but honestly, that is not an explanation for any of the shit she does. She's very attention seeking, very needy, very dramatic. She sort of doesn't care about anyone other than herself. She gets mega pissed off when her brother Rush gets a girlfriend. Um, there's a reason for that, which would be a spoiler, but still like you think you would be happy for a loved one being in a relationship, even when, um, uh, he, her brother becomes a father. She just doesn't really give a crap. Um, and she, oh, she's just such an infuriating character. And then at the end of the series, she got her own book and she had so much potential to be a really good character and for it to be a really good book. But she, her, her book is terrible. She does some really shady stuff and it's such a problematic book. And it is, oh, she's kind of just nuts. She's, oh. I love her in a way. I love her as the villain, but just, oh, she's such a bitch. She's this, although, and she's such a bitch and she's a massive drama queen. Number seven, animated. A book with cartoons on the cover. I could have so cheated with this and picked a graphic novel, but I didn't. Uh, I picked a book that I really, really like and whose cover with the cartoons really expresses and conveys the story. And that is Girl in the, that is Girl in Between by Anna Daniels. This is an Australian contemporary comedy. I could have used this for the comedy one, but I chose to use it here. Um, so you have our main character, Lucy, here. Um, there's a dog in the story. What's the dog's name? Oh, Glenda, which is meant to be a Kelpie. That's not really Kelpie-ish. But m majority of the story takes place in Rockhampton. So you have Australia down the bottom here. Um, and then some of the book also takes place in London. And so you have London up here. Um, I think this is a pretty good cover and it just kind of, it's bright and fun, which is, which is exactly what the book is. Number eight, watch it again. A book or series that you want to reread. I will just say, this would be a pretty good answer for this one, but I've recently reread it for like the third time. So I'm not going to include that. Instead of going to include a, a series that I do desperately want to reread. And I did start a while ago and I'm apparently 10 chapters in according to where my bookmarks up to. Um, but that is the Tomorrow series by John Marsden. This is the book, uh, first book, Tomorrow When the War Began. I read this in high school. I've read it, I think, twice since. Um, and it's a six, seven, six book series. And I think I only have like one or two books to go. I don't know why I never got around to finishing it, but I really want to reread it and I want to finish it because it is such a really great series. And I really do hope it still lives up to the epicness that I've thought it to still be. Um, but it's an amazing Australian sort of dystopian but not really but kind of series oh, it's so good you have to read it and i definitely recommend watching the movie starring like caitlin stacy and lincoln lewis oh that is such a good film tv series i'm a bit still iffy on i never finished it either but yeah this series i need i seriously i need to reread it number nine documentaries a non-fiction book that you really recommend other people read 
I picked two for this one simply because they're both books I think you should read but at the same time they're both books that not everyone is going to be interested in. The first one is The Concise History of Australia by Stuart McIntyre. This is the third edition. I think they're up to the fourth edition now. Um, I seriously recommend everyone in Australia read this book or at least read some of this book. It is such a fantastic look at Australian history. Like in high school we are literally taught or really during any of, any of our schooling, but specifically high school, we are taught about Captain Cook, the First Fleet, maybe a little bit of the Eureka Stockade, then Federation, and then everything after that, like the wars, and that's about it. Um, but there is so much in Australian history that is so interesting to learn about. Um, and this covers it really, really well. Um, like, and it's concise. It's not that long. I mean, how many pages is it really? It's 350 pages long. Um, and it, and Stuart's covered, um, all the different events and topics really, really well, but made it, like, really enjoyable to read. Oh, this is such a good book. If you are into history, or if you are Australian, please read this, because you will be surprised at how much you don't actually know about our history and how interesting it is. People, I feel like, always think that other countries have really interesting history because it has longer history and history that goes further back, but we still have really interesting history of what we can record and write down. And I really recommend reading this book. The other non-fiction is I Hate My Selfie by Shane Dawson. This is his first non-fiction book. It's a series of anecdotes and sort of essays collection of essays written by Shane Dawson. Um, I love Shane and this is such a really great book. The, the stories he tells in here are really really good. Some are like happy and upbeat, others are a little bit down and very moving. Um, but Shane just has a really great like anecdotal tone to his writing and it's really really good. If you're a fan of Shane and haven't read his book yet or either of his books, I still haven't read the second one. Um, then you definitely need to check them out. Number 10, Action and Adventure, an action-packed book. This one is another one I could have also used for the reread thing, but that is God's Grave by J. Christoph, the second book in the Nevernight Chronicle. This is action-packed from the get-go. The first book was pretty action-packed as well, um, but this like picks up like straight away with the action because we've had the entire first book to introduce us to this world. This book is epic and insane and a crazy journey. I'm super excited for the third book, which is probably going to be twice as action-packed as this one is. Like, this is intense, and I seriously recommend this series to anyone who loves action and adventure and assassins and bloodshed and murder and just, oh, this is a good book. Number 11, uh, new release, a book that just came out or is yet to come out that you really want to read. Uh, this one came out at the start of October, I think it was the 2nd of October, and that is Always Look on the Bright Side of Life by Eric Idle. Eric Idle being one of the members of Monty Python. Um, I talked about this in my, my most recent 2018 releases video, and actually you'll hear me talk more about Monty Python in my uh, haul at the end of the month. Um, but I've always loved Monty Python, and when I saw this book was coming out, I was very interested in getting it because... I, well, when I wanted to get the book, it's changed now, um, but um, I haven't always known a lot about Monty Python. Eric has always been probably one of the most passionate members of Monty Python because after Monty Python kind of sort of dissolved, he continued doing musical stuff relating to Monty Python after that. Um, but I don't know, I just really wanted to like this book I'm really excited for when I eventually get around to picking it up because I want to know more about Monty Python but I also want to know more about the men behind Monty Python and this will give a really good look at Eric who always had like an interesting role in Monty Python and yeah I'm just excited to get this one I don't know when I'm gonna get it but hopefully soon and you will see why in my haul. Number 12 Max tag some people. I've been out of the booktube loop for a while now so I just went through my subscription list and picked out four people that I thought might be interested in doing this. I um, mean if you're not tagged still do this anyway if you are interested in doing it. So firstly is Missy from Binge Reader, then Macy from Books and Coffee, Aoife from Fred Weasley Died Laughing and then Summer from Seasons Readings. And as I said, if you want to do this tag, I'll have the questions in the description or maybe in a pinned comment below. Um, and yeah, I really enjoyed this tag. Thank you so much to Kara for tagging me. Don't forget to check out her video if you haven't seen it and just want to see more people answering these questions. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye!